The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here on this Friday, Friday the 22nd of November. Wow. So close to wrapping up the year. Anyway, more importantly, let's just get right to the charts. We're looking at the Dow at this particular point, really struggling. I mean, it managed a 74-point rally so far. Oh, what happened there? Let me just get that again. Give me one second. Here we go. So, the Dow. Trading up 74 at 27,840. Uh, should I do that? Yeah, it's technical Friday. You know what? Uh, the market is lagging at this particular point. There's no rush to do anything. Let's just get this out of the way. I want to show you something that's very important. This is part, this is part of my webinar the other day. I spent some time on this. There's still time to go, uh, join the uh, that webinar. It was archived, and uh, some people, some subscribers, might not even be able to get to it until this weekend because they've been very busy uh, and couldn't make the webinar itself on Tuesday night. So you're in the same position. It's not a big deal. What is a big deal is that I use certain moving averages. And as far as I can tell, this move up in the green line, nine-period moving average, above the black line, the 14-period moving average, was what we were looking at Right here, Tuesday morning, I had said to myself, you know, perfect. We had shorted and we just got stopped out of our short position last week. Um, we, we shorted this and the, and the semiconductors, and we just got stopped out of those positions. And in fact, the, the Monday, they even closed, you know, even better than the stop. And then what else? Just about at the stop. And, and since then, they haven't even come close. Now, what's really important is that in this particular move, look, to get this green line as it had uh, back when we had the sell signal, uh, that was back in uh, September, when we had the sell signal back in July, back in April, every time it took a whole bunch of bars, it took like between 10 and 14 trading days before, after the signal was given, there was in fact a breakdown of the moving average. So what I'd say to subscribers to my opening call is that we've got to be very careful because the pattern that we're looking at suggests that from the Chapman Wave methodology, peak F and almost all the different indices, this is something that is not, not just a, a brief near-term pullback. It could, in fact, turn into a short-term short uh, topping motion. We won't know. But... I don't want to jump in on different short positions when there's still this tremendous strength in the nine period moving average. We have to be very selective and try to get a good price if we're going to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. And in fact, it might turn out that it has to be one or two positions before you actually start to see a confirmation that there's going to be a breakdown. We could be, look, uh, that this right here. On this particular high of the 12th of September, where we were able to short seven points from the exact high, um, was that the one? No, no, sorry, this is the one we got the exact high. Uh, 27,398, we managed to short 27,391. But look how long it took, and even this rally on the fifth day, <clears throat> which could have stopped us out, but didn't, it didn't even take out the previous high, was exactly the same thing that happened right here on September the 12th with a high of 27,306. That big rally on the fifth session went to 27,272. And then it started to tumble down, but it took for the green line to turn down and become a pink line, it took 14 sessions. So we might be witnessing exactly the same thing here. And that means that the high that was made right here on Tuesday, just about at the opening at 28,000, and 90, and pulling back immediately, red candle, gaps down red candle, inside bar, red candle yesterday, 
and the green candle so far today says that there could be a rally. This is only one, two, three. Monday, Tuesday, we could get a sudden spike and it could go all the way to 28,000, maybe 50. If it breaks to a new high, I have to reconsider that this is the situation that we saw earlier on in November where we were going along very steadily and then suddenly there was a sudden spike above the high of the 7th of November, 27,774, boom. Suddenly on the 13th, we had 27,806. A new high sort of negates this rectangle formation as far as I'm concerned. I don't think we're going to make the new high right now. I think there's a rotation going on that says be careful because within the context of this nine period moving average finally flattening out, that's all it's doing, it hasn't turned down, it's just flattening out. You've got time and some residual strength. Okay, I've got that out of the way. Technical Friday, I wanted to go through, and um, now, now you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's get out of that. So peak F, Chapman Wave methodology, peak F from the technicals are starting to fail. Stochastics now um, at 74 percent. The bank D's crossed negative, but you haven't got that moving average turned now. So this says we're in the process of having some kind of a pullback. Weekly chart stopped dead in the weekly chart right there in the, in the dash Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, and you're in leg D. In the monthly chart, still very bullish, and we've still got uh, a week to go before we wrap up. November. Oh, wrap up November. And it's an AD. So let's see the SB. So a new high negates everything. Going to 28,100 says, uh, 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 not yet, buddy. Okay, SP. So the Dow actually needs to pull back. I'm probably about 27,000. No, I'd say 27,670 will give me confirmation about a sell signal, probably going straight to a sell mode. All right. Now, sell mode, I prefer to have the moving averages cross negative, so let's just say sell signal. On the S&P, the trading is 31.07 up 3.81. The bank D's cross negative. Stochastic's uh, gone under 80% right now. It's a day's young, but it's under 80%. The on balance volume, the blue line's negative. And the moving averages are getting closer, but they're not even close enough to say we're within a day or two of crossing negative because it would take more than, more than a day or two to take points. You'd have to see 3,098, 3,000 and, no, no, 3,092, 3,088 for me to say, okay, probably a sell signal in the S&P. So days young as far as that's concerned. Weekly chart leg C is still very positive. QQQ, one, two, three, there we go. QQQ held the 14 period moving average. Is now down 24 cents at 201.46 and says that the um, NDX 100 trading vehicle holding okay off the three sessions is still holding the 14 period moving average. So far, so good in price. MACD's turned down, stochastics at 76%, not so great. Weekly charts still very strong, as is the monthly. A, a two, 204, trading in the 204s would be fabulous. Going to 200.32, somewhere around there. I'd say be careful. It's going to go down deeper. IWM, Russell 2000. Been going sideways. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, about 14, two, over two weeks, 14 sessions from the peak F top as well. All of them are peak F tops. And the shelf wave that says, be careful, yellow light flashes. 160.46 is what you need to break. It's at 157.99 right now. That's quite a bit of a way to go. But uh, it could happen quickly if everything suddenly comes together. But if it starts to break under 157.30, not good. I'll be right back. Dr. Chapman. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're back and let me just answer, I got a couple of questions. One of them, two of them are the same kind of question, um, different instruments, but it's basically the same question. Let me just, 31216, let me just type this in. So one was, I, I am in a short possession, a short position uh, on, on the SPY. Where would you add or what would you do? Uh, and, and so the, this was a question that came to me just as I was wrapping up yesterday. And I said that I would answer it on the show today, but I did expect some kind of a bounce today. Maybe we can deal with it then. So we're dealing with it right now. Uh, let me not make that red just yet because we have no confirmation yet. So the SPY is trading at 310.65. I'm just changing the color here because until I get a sell signal, I don't want to do anything rash. So here's the SPY. The MACD is just crossed negative. The stochastic's under 80%. Days young. Anything can happen. It looks to me like it's an attempt to try to get a little higher. So, Tim, what I'm going to say um, is this. In the context of what I'm looking at here, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'll draw what I'm anticipating. Hey, it could be completely wrong. I just, uh, all I'm doing is what everything appears to me that this, this is the kind of action that I'd be expecting, is that there should be some kind of a rally, an H pattern, the dreaded H pattern. And I don't think it'll last more than Monday or even Tuesday. And then I think we should be testing the low of 309.06 that was made on the 20th, two days ago. That's really not the issue. The issue that I'm looking at here is not what if I'm what if I'm right? It's what if I'm wrong? I, I like a trade I gave my subscribers this morning. Uh, it was so the, the specificity was such that if it didn't work, you were in and you were out. It's a screamer, and it's either screams to the upside. This is what happened to scream to the downside. Hopefully, you just you, you were in and you were out. And I'll talk about it just now. I like to talk about what works, and I like to talk about what doesn't work because it's the doesn't works that really teach you and educate you to the extent that you can formulate plans of protection, and that's really important. So in the SPY, what I am looking at here is that, this, that the high today is 311.12. It's trading 60 cents below that. I think there's a chance to push a little higher. So I'm going to suggest to you, I don't know where your entry point is, um, but I'm, you're looking to add to the position or exit the position. I'd say I... 
I would hold the position because I do believe from the technicals that I'm looking at and, and what I just explained in the uh, moving average chart that there is still residual strength and you don't want to be fighting the residual strength. If you haven't got a position yet on the short side, you could think of two things. One is maybe just nibble right here, but you want to be adding on any rally in the SPY. And I'd put it, I don't know if it can go higher than the bar of today's Friday. So this, I think it was Wednesday, we'd hit a 311.85. So this Friday up to Wednesday. Close to the, in the 311s, I would probably say to you, you could add a little bit to your position. Don't get too carried away because, as I say, it could be it could be 10 sessions before this breaks down. So either that or just keep your core position, have patience. The biggest problem is if this is going to be different to the others, and so far it has been different to the other corrections, there's a chance. One, two, three, four red candles. If there, today's another red candle from the way it opened and the way it is trading, and all of a sudden, by Sunday night, the, the futures are down. By Monday, there's talk of, who knows, impeach. I don't know what they're talking about. But it starts to pull back sharply. You won't get that extra entry. At the same point, if you've already got one, you don't want to be overloaded on the short side. If there's going to be a full U formation going all the way back to the high that was made at 312 point, oh, is that 69? 69, not 60, but 69. So, um, Yes. So what I'm going to say to you is have a little patience on the day. If by the end of the 312, I just need to type this in, 12.69. If by the end of the day, the futures are starting to fail, uh, then I'd say, you know what? You could just add a little bit. This one has to be a much smaller. This is like a, a short-term trading position that you're going to either add to or you're going to take off. So this is like, a, this is gonna, allows your core position to be held, and this other one is now your trading vehicle. Okay, now, it would have to go de decisively into the 312.20s for me to say, uh-oh, this rally might even take out the higher 312.69. But at this particular point, I think there's a big struggle going on and my bias here is to think that there's an arch formation that we will fail, and that by maybe Tuesday-ish, somewhere around there, we're starting to test the low that was made on Wednesday, and that was the low of 310.77. If it happens beforehand, this could be an acceleration lower, and then you will get those moving averages moving very quickly to the downside, because now we've used up the look-back period that was on the bullish side. We're starting to add the closing price of the downward movement. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. I hope that helps you. The next question was on the, uh, yeah, uh, the next question was <clears throat> on the uh, Roku. Uh, let me just do this. I was anticipating doing it. On Roku, what's happening? Well, it's having a high level consolidation. It's screened in the one to one, fall, Chapman Way falling axe extension, screened to 165.10, pull back to the 148, trading right now at 158.26, kind of sideways. I think Roku is trying as much as it can to build enough energy to try to retest the all-time high of 176.55, maybe go to 176.56 or higher, because that's where leg D in the monthly chart starts, leg D. And then I'd start to say, you know what, now we might see Roku have another digestive phase. But in the meantime, it's it, the weekly charts improved. But the daily chart at 83% in the stochastic and the MACD is still good, says, hey, it's holding very well here. Okay, next thing I want to look at is, um, so go to the IWM for a moment. IWM sideways trading band. You remember, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. And eventually, even the longer it goes, the greater the chances are that this whole uh, 158.60 area is going to become a fulcrum to pop up and to break down. And eventually, if it goes into the 156.10 or lower area, that's where it'll start to say, oh, okay, technicals are starting to fail. They'll impact the weekly, and then the weekly has 155.98 as the nine period moving average is key support. Any break to a new high in the IWM Russell 2000 would say, hey, now we're going to start to see the Russell outperform finally the other indices. Uh, we haven't seen that yet. Next question on the SMHs. Yeah, SMHs, 
just terrible action. Ten cents up, one thirty one twenty five. That lady, Amy. What is her name? Amy. 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 Uh, what's her name? Was on the. Um, she's done an absolutely incredible job. Amy uh, Sue. Is it Amy Sue? Anyway, the CEO of Advanced Micro Devices and just the most bullish outlook. And she was very modest at the same time, but she made a big deal that they're trying to focus on exactly what they need to focus on. It's like a geographic uh, chart, uh, step by step, okay, from place to place and area to area, uh, uh, laptops, etc. And they've got a fantastic product. But I've got a peak F with a Chapman Way 41.79 high on the 19th and then a 4167 Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal the next day. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, advanced micro devices, I think you're in for a breather. I'll be right back, Dow's up 77, S&P's up 40. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawn charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So, um, Advanced Micro Devices is trading at 39.18, down 34. Got a really great review from the uh, CEO last night. And um, hmm, uh, it doesn't seem to be responding all that well. Neither is the SMHs. I just think the SMHs are tight. I don't know if they are. Uh, just yet, I don't have an indication to say that they're going to do anything but maybe pull back a little bit further into the 127s. That's four points. That's a lot. But if that's the cons consolidation, and then you start to move to a, uh, to a higher high, um, that's going to be one thing. But if it actually goes deeper than that over the next three weeks, ooh, that's going to be a problem because that's kind of uh, looking at... Uh, 
uh, and that's just looking at uh, the general market as well that impacts the XLK. Question about GASX. GASX is the, uh, let me just check what that is. Um, natural gas related three times. Hey, let me just do this. I'm going to go to NG. I prefer to do NG. NG made a peak F top uh, right here. Uh, at on um, the uh, 5th of November at 2.96 in the continuous contract. Remember, if you're using a continuous contract, the charts are always exactly the same. The uh, the patterns, are the time frames, everything's good, except that the price has to be uh, um, reconstructed because it's a continuous contract. So they have to change the prices. The price one one month might be might be one thing. The next month it's the same pattern, everything except the actual price changes. So I had a kind of a Fibonacci. I like to do that every once in a while when everything looks to my eye. It's very Fibonacci related. Yeah, it does, but it kind of misses the points but it does show you that there's a nice strong move today in natural gas. Now, one of the things I've had trouble with is that the move, if you get the, if you get the move and it does what you want, look, this peak A, to, let me show you, the, the price move, so therefore my notations also move. So let me just fix this up here. So if you did get this as a beautiful entry price, but you only got in, let's just say you got in, um, not on the weekly chart, 2.26 was the low in the week of the 9th of August, but you got in about the uh, three or four weeks later. So you got in somewhere around here because you wanted a confirmation that peak A was going to be passed by peak B with the technicals improving, and you got that. Well, the price then went from the low of 2.26 to screams up to 2.82 the week of the 27th of September. And you say, great, you can pull back, but I'm anticipating with the MAC digger and all that stochastic uh, holding okay at that point that you should go pull back and then a leg C. Well, the pullback was from 2.942, almost three, down to 2.391. I mean, that's huge. And then it screams to a higher high and makes legs C in the, in the, in the Chapman Way methodology. Well, that's the problem. 2.960, and then it comes back down to the low a few days ago, 2.556. You see, that's the whole thing. There are times when the Chapman Way methodology has, it's just great because it's just, that's my rule of 136. Because if you in a bull phase or a bear phase, you want speed, you want it to quickly move. So if it goes um, in one bar, as it did here, and it goes from, look, peak A, and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only eight does a breakout, but it does it in a fantastic way. It doesn't happen that often, but if it does it, that's great, except it goes to peak B, and then one day down for a leg B, one day down for peak B, then it takes out the high of B and starts leg C, which is an alternate count F slash C, which I believe turned out to be an F, but... I like the one-day or three-day maximum distance in time before you take out the new high because that's speed, that's momentum, that's using all the force of the gravitational force to the upside because you've had a huge um, a momentum and, and um, uh, how can I call it, a torque spike, but it couldn't hold and a pullback. So now look what's happened. Look at the bumpiness of this. You're going from a high of May the 24th of 2.914 to a low of June, was that 21? Yeah, 2.360. You bounce up, you go to 2.70. You come down to a lower low all the way to 2.26, and then you stream up. So the bounciness doesn't account for the fact that, yes, you might accomplish a leg D, and you might get to that D, but on the way, you might be stopped out a dozen times and, and, and instead of being able. That's the reason why I said to subscribers, I'm, I'm always upset if I don't get almost the exact high or exact low because it makes it more difficult. Now we're vulnerable to spikes that go against you, whereas if you get what could turn out to be the exact moment, like when we were in a short nine points from the top, 
uh, back in, was that July? Yeah. Um, that gave us a lot of leeway for spikes to the upside and all. That's why those bounces in the u shape formation didn't take us out. So now this is what I'm saying, that this is, makes it much difficult. Now, the question is, what do I see? I see that this is a very nice turnaround in the stochastic at 13%. I would have preferred if it was at 23%. 30% is better because I've got the on-balance volume with us. It's gone above the 14 and 9 period moving averages. Uh, let me get rid of this Fibonacci for me. I don't see anything in it right now that I could use. But it has a cup formation, and I love these cup formations, especially if you get the veracity, the confirmation of the other technicals. Well, I haven't. I've got it of one. I've got it of two. I want three. I want the... Um, so three out of four. I want the MACD, which is the 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 uh, on the zero percent line, is starting to improve. That's a good sign. So this is what I'm going to say. If you're long, and I believe the question is, yeah, I'm long. Where, 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 what do we see next? I'm going to tell you that this is the best action that you could have got from the Doji candle yesterday. Because if there was another red candle today, I would have said, don't touch the long, especially three times long. But you are in, you're 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 in three times long, so that's fine. Um, what I am going to say is, if it can get at 2.699 with a high today of 2.713, if it can get to 2.731, let's reverse those numbers, all of a sudden that 200 period moving average of 2.755 becomes a magnet line and a tractor. It should pull the, pull the price towards it. So, so far you're good. Where would I put a stop on some part of the position? I'd put it right here at the opening price, which was... 2.621, I'd put it just a tad above, 2.625. All right, hope that helps you. Next question, I had Clovis. Now, um, I'm just trying to remember who, who, who called me about Clovis. I thought, was it Jason? I just don't remember. CLVS, CLVS. Clovis, great move today. Wow, that's the one I should have probably chosen. Um, it's up at 8.44, uh, trading up 68 cents, 8.78. And um, I love this chart. I, I like, oh, I should have put it down here. See, it was on my list, but it just wasn't on my list uh, last night and this morning. Um, good move. It is acting very, very well. Where would the price point be? Let me show you something. I've drawn this. I did everything, all the work for it, but didn't go long. It's trying to fill the gap. The gap low is the low of the 7th of August of 8.84. Today's high is 8.84. Five five, it's getting there. It did the Chapman wave left side, right side price time match. Everything here is perfect except when we aren't in it. I'm sorry, um, uh, but we do have. I do have some people that are in it, but it's not an official recommendation on my part. And um, yes, it's acting very well. Support. I just forget about where it's going because that's uh, that 8.50s is the target, but it's really 8.20 is the 8.15 is the support right now. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, just, I need to finish that. The Clovis trading at 8.46, up 70 cents up nine percent um so the question was uh, where, where did it go can i look at this as a longer where was it? whoa 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 uh, hmm. good time to buy clovis so the person who asked me is really a longer term position player and i'd say in your case because the low was down at 2.93 and it's oh, about uh, what 250 percent gain uh, right here at 8.47. I'm just going to say to you because you're longer term, just start your position right now. Start your engines. Just a little nibble. I would never have said that if for anyone else because it's in E and it's a MACD. Everything's looking good, but it's a biotech. Clovis Oncology Inc. Biotech CLVS um, up 69 cents at 8.45. Um, I would have, for, for, for safety, I would have preferred closer to the uh, level it was at just two days ago in the seven area, um, seven twenty. But at the same time, I love the way it's acting. It's acting so well that it could actually go higher before it comes back and test the seven fifty seven dollar support area, and it'll give you a good feel for the stock. So in your case, I'm going to say just nibble here to have it on your not just on your uh, on your watch list but you're actually there with you can see it how it's re responding to the general market so that's it and um uh, it did everything we wanted uh i just didn't have it so yeah it looks very good and uh but i don't think i'd get anything close to a full position i just start a little nibble and the reason being if at any point it, it's a biotech so anything can happen it could drop really sharply you don't want to be over uh, overexposed to you know biotech although everything from what i hear is favorable for it right now but who knows so yes just start your position here yeah, a little bit of a position this is follow it just remind me about it i i personally am going to wait three four weeks if it can get back into the 650, 620 area, that might be the time on the weekly chart to say, hey, now it's really improving. It might not get there, then you've just missed it. So I hope that helps you. Now, the question I had, another question was, um, oh, I have to go back and try to find it. Okay, another question was, yes, so could I look at um, Raytheon? We did that the other day on my show because a subscriber wants to know about it. And what I said is, looks, it's acting really well. It looks to me like it's making some kind of a little bit of a double top right here in the daily. The weekly is still acting extremely well. It's gone up to the Chapman Wave inside track target repellent zone. Let me show you in the big picture here. See this big cup formation, Raytheon. 
uh, trading at 215.66, down 15 cents. Look at this beautiful action, just really a stellar performer. Who knew that it went to 229.95 in April of last year, that it would just plummet to 144 in December? Who knew that it had, look, it's like a staple. You've got your little uh, cup there, a deeper V shape than the cup on the right side. Very imbalanced. But I chosen to use a particular candle for uh, the plumb line because you couldn't use the plumb line here. The obvious plumb line just wouldn't work at all. Uh, it wouldn't even work for the left side high of September, the week of the September the 21st at 210. So I've used a different one. Uh, in this case, right here at peak A, uh, on the week of the 1st of March at uh, 188.34. And I've used that. So it's got all the way until the end of the year, uh, the first week of January to get to 229.95. Well, that's not so far away, 20 points, 10% in a market like this, but maybe it is because it's starting it's for five weeks. The high that it made five weeks ago, it's kind of not, it's, it's there. That's where it is in the 214, 215 area. So it might struggle to do this. It might have a bit of a pullback and then a pop to the upside. But it does look very good. It does look like at some point it wants to test the 229 all-time high. And at this particular point, the daily is taking a bit of a breather. And I drew in this rectangle to say, my eye says, I spy with model eye, my eye says that it's going to be in a range and that at some point Raytheon should test the 212 to 210 area. That might be a, a, the next time to buy it. So I hope that helped um, uh, subscribe a question. The uh, next thing I want you to do is, um, so I, let me show you the trade that I put on this morning because it didn't work. Um, right here i had a few i had a choice of this one t-a-s-t carol's restaurant group and it was right here last night right there i drew the whole pattern and everything to say hey there's just a little mini pullback to the 822 ish area it closed at 820 it's in leg c it closed at eight oh i didn't want to do that uh, eight 8.32 was the high and it closed at 8.27. Nicely divided around 8.22. Well, what happened was, and this was one of them. Another one was, uh, I'll tell you right now, I had a choice 8TRS, which was this day, yesterday, and closed, and it was in a very powerful move. I call them screamers. They come up, they show on a particular, uh, something I wrote uh, that gives it um, a good indication, stocks that are in this screaming upside um, method. Um, and look what happened. Yesterday, this one, ATRS, whatever it is, and Taris Pharmaceuticals closed. At 480 was the high yesterday, closed at 4.79. I was thinking of putting in a, a bid just a little lower. I would have said 4.53, 4.52. What was the low today? 4.47, uh, 4.74. And now it's trading way up. It's up 16, up 3.34% at 4.95. And I had another one. Uh, can I find it right here? Did I write it? I thought I wrote it all down. Nah, come on. Um, oh, yes, ANH. ANH. Uh, I like this one a lot. I just thought it looked a little tight technically, but it looked very good. There's another one. It's up. Now it's unchanged, but it hit. It closed yesterday at 3. 49 and today it hit 3.52. So up three, three it's a percentage gain, but it's no, no big deal. That's why I thought the weekly chart said it's going to need a little more emphasis. And the other one that I was looking at was FSK. I don't know what this one does in the financial something or other, FSK. There it is. So I thought, oh, it's very close to D, and it sort of stalled yesterday. I thought maybe it'll stall again today. So I didn't choose. Those are the choices. So I chose TAST. So in at H22, but look at the look at the look what happened at the open. Uh, TAST. Yeah, look at the two-minute chart. Look what it does. Uh, what what day are we? We're talking today. Yeah, look what it does. So. This is yesterday's. Uh, this is yesterday's close at eight dollars and twenty-seven cents. It pops up at the open. It goes to eight thirty-one, and then two minutes. In the next two minutes, I said to eight twenty-two. It goes all the way down to eight twenty-three. If you put your buy-in uh, for the following at nine thirty-six, 
um, it opened at 8.23 and plummeted to 8.03. And I'd said have an 8 cent uh, risk. I, I called it 10%. I didn't mean 10%. I meant 1%. And look what happened. It just kept coming down. But now it's starting to come back again. Now, if speed was your enemy here, uh, this is not the trade I wanted. It was the one of the other ones that had spiked to the upside. This is a miss. And I like to show, I, I don't like it. It's not, my, it's not a pleasure to show. This is very embarrassing. But it didn't work. But I had a 1% risk. But there was a chance that it could have a very nice pop. I don't know if it could still do that, but that, I wanted to show it doesn't always work. You do your best you can. And I had a question about sugar. We'll do SB as soon as I get back. Pastor Chaplin dials up 82. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. I'm sorry. I didn't see the call. We've got Kevin in Sacramento. Hi, Kevin. You want to look at Dow Chemical. Is that right? I think Dow Inc. Um, the symbol is D-O-W. Yes. Okay. Dow Inc. Uh, I think it used to be Chemical. Anyway, so Dow right, Inc. Right, is right. trading at 60, uh, 5424. Do you have a position? No, this is, um, I've been looking at uh, dividend plays, and they, they're ex-dividend next week. And um, oh. so I'm just, I was just, just looking to scalp some, um, some dividends or look at it like a six-month play. What I've been doing is finding decent dividend plays and um, buying the stock, selling calls, and buying puts to just 
So, just so pulling, Kevin, you know, five Kevin, or six percent. Let me just ask you a question. Can you send me an email with maybe two or three? Let me look at them over the weekend because I love your strategy. You've spoken about it before, and it seems to be a nice, successful strategy for you. What I am going to say to you is, as a dividend stock at 54.26, I would look at it two ways. On a very short-term basis, it made a, a doji PG just about seven days ago. It's pulled back very nicely and steadily. The weekly chart is what I'm looking at. I like this weekly chart, and so far it's held well. So on the longer term, yes, I like it. On the short term, I would say by Monday or Tuesday, it needs just a, it needs a bounce. It's up 39 cents today. It needs to get to it 54.27. If it's able to touch 55.10 in the next day or two that's really nice because it says there's a good chance it's going to try to test the high of 56.25 made the other day but if it starts to fail and by monday afternoon tuesday you're looking at a stock that's at 53.50 it's down 50 or 60 cents from where it is now then it's just kind of stuck so you want a little bit of strength and then i think it has a chance to push higher but at this particular point on a, on a six on a two and a half to three month basis I like the chart very much because it's in that lagging area that's just starting to pick up strength. This good eye, I like to say, if you don't mind, if you want to send me a, a, a list, let's look at them together. But this one as a dividend play, if you can give me more specificity about next week, I can do it again on Monday. Hope that helps you. That does. Thanks, Thanks Basil. Thank you very much for calling. That's Kevin in Sacramento. Dow's up 91. Folks, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom. I'll see you on Monday. And check out my opening call, Daddy Newsletter.